MTV Music News. Every hour, 24 hours a day. First with the artists. Music News is only on TV, on MTV. Hi, this is original MTV VJ and Sirius XM host Nina Blackwood chatting with Johnny Joelli of Hardline about his first solo album, his career, and just about everything. <laughs> All right, um, why don't we start off uh, back in, in the day, in the 90s, when um, I met you, basically. Uh, what was going on? Uh, you were, well, I remember I was there. You were forming Hardline. So uh, let's talk a little. Let, let's uh, uh, reflect on that period of time. Okay. Um, Nina, first of all, thanks so much for taking the time um, to talk to me. Um, I have idolized you for many, many years. You're a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful talent and a, an amazing human. Um, so more, should, more people should be like Nina Blackwood, that's for sure. Well, you know, Johnny, Thank I feel you. the same same with you and and that voice, that leather lunged voice of yours. You know, Thank I always you, think Nina. of it that way. But well, that's you know that was the whole thing. Uh, you know, uh, I met you and your brother, and you guys were on a plane. Uh, that's right. we, we actually met Nina. We were coming back from the Bammy. The Bammy. Remember that? Absolutely. The in, in Northern uh, Cal, and, and yep. that's where we met you for the first time. Yep. And we were, Joe and I were putting together what we thought at the moment was going to be, at that time, was going to be like a hard rock rendition of what the Nelson brothers were doing. And we were going to call that project Brothers. And then we, um, yeah, it morphed into Hardline after um, Neil and my sister. Uh, were together, and we were having a family uh, get together at the hol- at holiday time, at Christmas. And Joey and I were playing some music, and Neil comes running into the kitchen and says, "Man, let me, let me see that guitar." And he starts playing these chords, and he says, "Try it this way, try it that way." And that was really that was the birth of Hardline in that kitchen, having some Italian arancinas and shrimp oreganata. It mm-hmm. all happened right there, and Hardline was born. Neil goes, man, I want to be involved in this, and we thought it was going to be just a production role, but then it morphed into him <clears throat> wanting to be part of the band, and boom, Hardline. We had a nice run. It was uh, it was a great journey, no pun intended, and uh, I learned I learned so much, Nina, from from that. I mean, I was I was a baby, and I had to learn about the business. I got to play some of the largest venues in the world. You know, we toured a lot. We, we, I got to, you know, live on the road and experience um, all of that and, and grow, grow our, our, our fan base and get to interact with some amazing, amazing people. So it was, it was a great time. It was a really, really great time. I got a cool story for you, Nina, that I don't know if you ever heard this story. Mm. One time, we were um, we were playing either or well, maybe we were on a promotional tour or we were playing I can't remember but we were in Paris and we were in a very exclusive um, restaurant and Suzanne Summers was actually there eating there was only like four tables there and I was a huge Suzanne Summers fan Three's Company and the whole thing but anyway and, and the thigh so, master of course and the thigh master of course and God did she have great thighs so anyway <laughs> so that was what you were a fan of anyway continue yeah <laughs> but we um so some people recognized the band and they wanted an autograph but they didn't have a pen and so i said i'm really sorry do you, you know do you have a pen and some people next to us uh, were from america and they said i have a pen I said, oh, thank you, sir, very much. And I, and I used this gentleman's pen, and I signed the autograph, and away we went. A year later, you know, we were on tour. We were doing a headlining tour in the U.S. with Hardline. And after every show, we signed as much as autographs, as many autographs as the people required. We didn't care if it took two, three, four hours. After that show, we signed everything, and we did, and we did it. Neil did, everyone. And one day, I can't remember exactly which show, this old
older couple, actually, middle age, I should say, not older, middle age, came up to the to the stand where we were signing and said, Hi, Johnny. I said, Hello. And he said, Do you remember a year ago you were in Paris we're in a little tiny restaurant and you borrowed a pen? I said, I do remember that. And the lady and the husband start jumping up and down. They said, It's our pen. It was our pen. It was our pen. Oh. They went back. They learned about the group, Hardline, and they bought the record. They became the record. I'm dating myself right there. They bought the CD, and they became fans. And that experience really it sums why I wanted to become a musician, why I wanted to be on that stage, to be able to connect with people and have music connect with them and move them. I mean, how it was the coolest thing ever. These people became fans. I used their pen in Paris, and they're coming to a show. That's so cool. That is so cool. cool. And I, I just want to reflect a little bit of, uh, you know, when I did uh, meet you guys, one of the things, uh, along with, you know, your voice completely blew me away. And uh, I, I loved what Hardline was doing, Hot Cherie. I still love that song so me much. Too. Uh, but one of the things that really impressed me about uh, you and brother uh, was your work ethic. And and before Hardline, I mean, it wasn't like all of a sudden you met Neil and got a record deal. I mean, you, I I heard your stories of you both, um, Joey, uh, your brother, telling me that I mean you subsisted on potatoes. That you were literally starving artists with Brunette, the the band. Uh, yes. Before a hard line, and then finally, and I, and I'll never forget that. I, I know I'm reflecting on my story with this, but I will never forget you guys shopping the deal. And when you got signed, it was right around the Fourth of July. Uh, you guys had gone back home to Pennsylvania, and yeah. it was like I, it, it was just you know I remember how excited I was just being your friend, but. Do you remember that feeling after all the years? I mean, you know, you really played out, you know, the, not the starving musicians. I mean, you guys were gigging. You guys had a following with Burnett. Uh, you know, it wasn't, like I said, add water, and all of a sudden you're a rock band. But after all that, and you got that deal, how did you feel finally, finally to get, oh. you know, the major deal? Nina, you know, it was it was an indescribable feeling. I mean, I can't even recall. Uh, I can't recall the feeling other than it was like a mother comparing uh, the birth of a child. Yep. It was like that. I mean, it was everything that I've worked hard up for. And a lot of people don't really understand me that – you know, back when I was watching you on MTV, uh, I was working like a young kid, focused, laser focused. I don't remember many days in school. I wasn't there mentally. I was about the music and getting this laser focus on, on getting a record deal. And, we, and you use such a you starving artist, that cliche, believe every word of that. We starved. We used to label our peaches. If we could come into some fresh fruit, we'd label them on our bus. Jesus, this is Johnny's peach. I mean, it was literally starving. So when that happened, two things happened to me psychologically. One, just the most amazing relief that I did it. I did it after all these years. My friends were playing with Tonka toys. I was playing my guitar. I was trying to write songs for better and better songs and this and that and the other. But then the next wave of feeling hits you like, okay, now I'm here, but now the real work begins. And Joey and I just jumped in immediately and just just pounded the pavement. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of, un, uh, you know, it's cool when you're a young kid playing music and yet, you know, you're writing songs. Like, oh, how cool, look what I, look what I created and you know, but there's a whole different element when you have millions and millions of dollars invested in you. Now you've got to you've got to see this thing through. So it's a it was a mixed blessing, but a blessing. And every day, I used to say I used to thank the Lord for for 
the blessing. Every day, without question, I went, because I used to I'd tell everybody, it's like hitting the lottery. It's very, very difficult to do, and there's so much great talent out there that never gets heard. Yep. And I just wouldn't give up. I mean, I don't know if that's the Italian in me, but I just, I don't give up. No, yeah, and, and like I said, your work ethic uh, was amazing to watch because I know you lived and breathed. Everything was about the music. It was. Music. Always, always. Now, how many albums did Hardline? You did three? Uh, we did, so we had our main album, Double Eclipse, and then there was Hardline 2, maybe 3, maybe 4. I don't know, there was a live album in there. We got a bunch. Okay. Yeah, this and and then afterwards, um, after Hardline, um, you played with, or you sang, not played, I'm sorry, well, played too, uh, Axel Rudy Powell. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, Axel, Axel was a huge Hardline fan, and Axel is a, um, you know, solo German artist, and he does not work outside, really, of Europe that, that often. Um, I don't think he's ever been here in the U.S. But anyway, he got in touch with me through a buddy of mine, um, Jeff Scott Soto, who's a great singer. All right. He used to sing with, with Ingve Malmsteen and, and, and others. And he asked if I'd be interested in playing on, a, uh, on an ARP um, album. So we, we spoke through email. I never even heard the sound of his voice for one year. And then he sent me some tunes. I said, wow. This is old school metal. I love this. This is what I I was you know I was born into that sound, and I make that sound naturally, and I want to do this. So I've been with Axel Nina now for 17 years, and we have I think probably over 20, 25 plus uh, different albums out now. And the band is, is hugely successful in, uh, in, in Europe and Asia, and, and uh, I love it. I'm heading out for a tour in April, and, um, and then again, I believe in September, and we've got a bunch of big festival shows, and we play for a lot of people, and we have a lot of fun, and it's family. 17 years, if you can get along with someone for 17 years, I mean, it's by default family. And that's right. those guys are. Yeah, so that, that's the ARP group. And and uh, so you you predominantly are touring. You're going to be touring in April in Germany, then, right? Or uh, Europe, I should say. Yes. He's based in, Europe, in Germany, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, he's based in Ger- Germany. Yeah. But we play throughout uh, throughout Europe. Yes. yes. And then also an, another thing that uh, you became involved with, Crush Forty Sega. Yes. This was this was uh, quite odd to me. I I never. Um, this sort of fell on my lap, and I, I have so much fun with this. Now, uh, as you know, I have two two children, mm-hmm. and um, my youngest son, Brandon, was into video games, as most kids are. And uh, June Sonoy, who has worked for Sega, um, was also a, a big fan of my voice and of Hardline and asked me if I would participate in writing some music for games. At first, I thought, "Whoa, this is this is interesting." I mean, I know we all know soundtrack albums for movies, and but games. So I, I I investigated this, and I found out that I can be really creative, and it's a lot of fun, and I can involve my family and my kids in this, um, you know, the, the whole creative process. And so I started working directly with June. And that's a project that's been going also for 17 years. And we've written some of the biggest gaming songs, um, because that's a whole different world, Nina. It's amazing. It's it's a world within this world. And I've written with June some of the the biggest songs, like Live and Learn, What I'm Made Of, um, for that that market. And we, we created a band called Crush 40. That's when I was in my young 30s, and I did not want to turn 40 years old. <laughs> I'm going to have to change, to change the band name to Crush 50 soon. No. Uh, uh, not too soon. But, uh, yeah, so that's Crush 40, and, and, and I love it because it's like scoring a movie. You, you get a scene, and you have to, even though it's a game, you still have to bring out the emotion 
of what's happening with the characters in that game. And I, I just love that. It's, it's, it's creating. It's what I do. That is so cool. It now, cool. after all these years, uh, you're going to be doing a solo album. So, uh, uh, not why, because I want to hear your voice. So, <laughs> it's basically oh, what made you uh, decide to do a solo album. Well, great question. Nina, um, yeah, so all of these projects and, you know, integrating and collaborating with many different writers and things like that is, is, is wonderful. I love it. I love it. But doing a solo album um, is a point in your life, and it's a point in my life right now where I want to reach within myself and pull out the creativity that's been driving me for many, many years, but I'm not able to share that personal creativity with these other projects. So this is a way for me to, to really you know, bring that out personally. Solo album, to be honest with you, scares the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. It really does. I mean, there's, there's, uh, I, I, I feel some pressure um, when you're solo. But um, I, I, I need to do this. I've always wanted to do it. I've always backburnered it because I'm, I'm extremely loyal. Not that I'm not going to be loyal to the other projects, but those projects have consumed my, my time, and I'm going to make the time um, to make this album and, and just bring out as much of this bottled up energy and creativity that I have in me and, and put it onto, uh, onto a CD. Now, is it going to be uh, along the lines of the hard, harder rock that, that I'm familiar with you doing, or is it going to be... Are, are you going to go all James Taylor on us? Or? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think so. Okay. No, I, you know, I, you know, I, people know me for that, that hardline sound. You know, I was instrumental in writing most of those songs on the hardline record. So one would expect that it would sound a little bit like that because that's who I am. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I won't be throwing, I don't think too many curveballs, but you you never know. I'm going to allow it just to happen, Nina, and see, see where, where it goes. But you know, my voice and you know it well, it just kind of does that thing. Mm-hmm. And did you did you name me Leather Lungs? Who named me Leather Lungs? Well, that remember happen? that we were. Uh, what I remember of this, and I, I'm not sure if if I'm correct, but I remember that it came about uh, the Chris Cornell, who could be termed Leather Lungs of Soundgarden. Uh, really, that's how I remember it. Um, and and I just latched on to that, <laughs> and and that's the perfect definition of you. I think he he made some comment that he really liked your voice or something, and leather lungs was was uh-huh. in there somehow. And I don't know if it was Neil that brought that up, but I I do remember Chris Cornell saying leather lungs about your voice, and he said no. You know, just that strength and just, uh, but but your voice, the thing that I, I've always loved about your voice is even though it's got that hard rock edge, it's got the, the melodic tone to it. I want to mention one other thing that's really important, yes. you know, with Pledge, with Pledge Music. This is something really unique, and I don't know if, if you know about this, but there is another phenomenal online portal called Stage It. And I'm going to be doing, it's part of the exclusives, it's part of the gifts that we're giving away when you pre-order um, CD. I'm going to be doing a live acoustic show streamed right in my home um, for fans who, who want to enter my home and watch the show. My family will be here, the kids will be running around, the dogs will probably be barking. It's going to be the coolest thing. And I forgot to mention that. That's one of the, uh, the exclusives when you, when you pre-order the solo album. Oh, that is so cool. Isn't that I'll neat? be watching. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Chris Cornell, while we're uh, on that right. subject, yes. I, think I, re- I think I recall why that happened, because I remember Neil, Neil Sean, saying, hey, man, <laughs> oh, everyone, why, I don't know why everyone tries to 
do Neil's voice. Like, hey, man, what's happening? But anyway, <laughs> Neil <laughs> said to me, I remember this. He said, that guy is trying to sound like you, Johnny. And I laughed so hard. I go, Neil, that's Chris Cornell. He's Soundgarden. They're out there. They're out already. They've sold you know, millions of records. He's not trying to sound like me. He doesn't even know who I am. And we laughed about it. But maybe, uh, maybe I don't know how that all, but that's kind of cool. Leather lungs. I'll go with that. Yeah, as leather as lungs. Keep, as long as they keep filling with air, I'm good. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, with um, also with this solo album, you're doing something um, kind of unusual, I think. Uh, something with the pledge music. Uh, explain that a little bit. Oh, this is this is a fantastic program. You know, uh, pledge music is a uh, portal, if you will, o- online, where artists can create um, donation money to create their projects. I'm using it a little bit differently. Um, So the basis, though, of Pledge Music is wonderful. It's a way to, for an artist like myself to really, truly connect with a fan. That's what happens. So we now have special exclusives and gifts for fans and for their contributions Um, towards the CD, so they're actually involved in the creation and making of it. They get to see the process, hear the process, watch it unfold. You you know, as an artist, I do a weekly update, and um, those who have pledged towards um, pre-buying the the record get to have real, you know, like basically like one-on-one time with me. It's, it's, It's quite... Uh, private. It's neat. So um, I do these updates and explain, you know, equipment and um, really un- uh, just unveil myself and make myself available to the fans directly. Where in the past, Nina, you know, the whole music business and how we made records, it was all top secret. No one could hear. No one, no one knew where the band was recording, and no one, knew, you know, you had to, you know, I, there was rumors that that Van Halen was recording, you know, somewhere in L.A. and blah blah blah. Now it's 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 different. It's about um, appreciating your fans, reaching them, connecting with them, staying in touch with them, and letting letting them be a, a part of the creation of of the record. So that's why. I chose to do it through pledge music and then offer exclusives, what we call exclusives. They're gifts to the uh, to the fans for pre buying. So there's there's just unique things from my collection, like backstage passes and posters and and of course the CD and some uh, exclusive only um, uh, EP, one that I'm putting out called Colorblind, which is some unreleased music that people have been breaking my chops for for a long time. So They'll be privy to that when they pledge, um, and on and on and on. But um, the other great thing about pledge music is the fact that it's um, I, I can use it for charity, and that's exactly what I'm doing. There's a family that is that is uh, in our hometown that they're uh, very close to us, to my family, and their son Joe had a had a very serious accident. He he dove into the Long Island Sound here uh, on the East Coast and he hit a rock and he is paralyzed from the from the chest down. He is um and the cost of rehabilitation is millions and millions of dollars over his lifetime. So I'm actually contributing to his his cause. And I know there's a there's a tremendous amount of charities everywhere for for humans, for animals, but this is so at home and so close and near to me that I had to do something. I have to um, help the family the best I can. So when when my fans come to the pledgemusic.com forward slash Johnny Gioelli site and they contribute, a portion of the funds will go to the Barber family to uh, to help them with any medical assistance they need for their son. So that's what really lights my heart. And he's he's uh, how old? He's in uh, high school. He's he's seventeen years old. Seventeen. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad. He has a whole life ahead of him, and he has 
a great challenge ahead of him. And, and every day, I was just doing an interview, um, actually on Sega Radio, and I was talking about this a little bit. And we tend, as humans, we tend to to forget the important things uh, in our day and our blessings. We forget that you know our, that our fingers move, and we forget that we can walk, and we forget that we can talk and move, and we don't think anything of it. For this young man, he has a, a long road just to get some movement back in a finger. So I have to help, Nina. That's just who I am. I have to. Yeah. Wow. Can you just repeat how people can, um, is it through your web page or the GoFund, if you can? It's actually, it actually goes, sure, it goes right through Pledge Music, and it's Pledge Music, www.com pledgemusic.com forward slash Johnny G-O-L-E G-I-O-E-L-I <laughs> you got that in? That's a lot of how, how many how many times have you had to spell that in your life? <laughs> oh, many. I think, you know, that's why this solo album most likely will be called Johnny. We're not gonna, we're not even going to worry about last names on this one, Nina. It's too difficult. I think it took me two years not to put the E before the I. Well, you too. Still doing that you too. <laughs> now, one of the things um, too uh, that you have done over the years since we first met, you got your pilot's license, and not only that, you do something that's very close to my heart. Oh, my animal stuff. Is yeah. That what you're referring to Nina. Oh, yes. yes. So you know, a lot of. People don't know that uh, this about me, but I am a pilot, and Joe, my brother Joe, is also a pilot, but I have a charity that's really dear to me, and uh, it's called Pilots and Paws. So my son Brandon and I are, are mostly responsible. The rest of the family helps, of course, but my passion for aviation stems from flying dogs, uh, flying animals, uh, cats too, but... Um, I try to pull as many animals out of kill shelters as I possibly can and work with other pilots in the U.S., and we fly dogs to adoption centers, to humane societies, to um, forever homes, and that I just, you look nothing against humans, but I'd much rather fly an animal than a, than a human in my airplane. They don't it's complain just, as much, and they're not they as... Don't, <laughs> I've never had a complaint yet. I mean, they, they want, I've fit, um, shoot, at one time I've, I've fit over eight dogs in my airplane, and we, we fly. My territory is, of course, East Coast, so I fly up and down the coast and do whatever I have to do to help these beautiful, these beautiful creatures who give us so much um, unconditional love always. So that's uh, pretty, pretty uh, you know, dear to my heart, doing that uh, that's great, Pilots and Paws. That's a great organization to uh, Thank you, Nina. To, to speak with you, Johnny. And I can't Likewise, wait to hear. Nina. I can't wait to hear the solo album. Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! I can't wait to. You'll get copy number one, Nina. Okay. Signed. Got it reserved Fine. for you. 